Hi, let's talk about the renal fascial spaces and their contents. In this video, we'll discuss the relative locations and surroundings of the kidneys in the retroperitoneal space. The kidneys sit in the retroperitoneal space, that is the space behind the peritoneum, approximately between the T11 and L3 vertebral levels. Although not shown very well in this photograph, the left kidney typically sits higher than the right kidney. Generally, the, uh, the left kidney is at about the T11 down to about the L2 vertebral level, whereas the right kidney is sitting at approximately the, the T12 down to about the L3 vertebral level. But this is a, a, a rough estimation and the exact positions of the kidneys are a little more dynamic than we give them credit for. Now, if we look, um, the hyla of the kidneys are best described at the L1 level. We oftentimes refer to that L1 level as the transpyloric plane. So if one were to look at the, uh, the superficial structures being the jugular notch, which isn't shown here, but is palpatable on, on yourself at home. And then the pubic symphysis, which we can't quite see here because the anterior abdominal wall is uh, reflected anteriorly, but again, imminently palpatable at home. The midpoint of that would be this transpyloric plane. And it's going to um, coincide with the plane at which the pyloric part of the stomach is going to empty into the proximal part of the duodenum. So if we were to kind of imagine the digestive system in here, here's our stomach, and then that stomach is going to feed into the duodenum there at the uh, at the L1 level, at that transpyloric plane. Now, even though the kidneys are within the retroperitoneum, they can move around. Their, their position is, um, is mobilizable through either the process of respiration, so as the, the diaphragm depresses, or by the action of gravity upon the kidneys, as we'll discuss. So here we have a, um, an inferior view of a cross section or a, a transverse section of the body. This would be approximately at the, uh, the L1 level. Um, here is the right side, and then this is the, the midline there. And we can see the kidney. here. And the kidney here is located within the retroperitoneal space. So that retroperitoneal space is everything that is posterior to the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a serous membrane lining the abdominal pelvic cavity. There's a parietal layer on the walls and a visceral layer on the organs, and it is behind that posterior parietal layer that we have this retroperitoneal space. Now, the retroperitoneal space can be further subdivided, um, especially with respect to the kidney. So there is perirenal fascia, sometimes just called renal fascia, that is going to separate what are known as perirenal spaces. And the perirenal space would be the space within this fascia from the pararenal spaces. And the pararenal spaces are the spaces outside of that perirenal or just renal fascia. Those pararenal spaces can be divided into anterior, perirenal spaces and posterior perirenal spaces that sometimes aren't even in contact with one another. 
Um, one way that uh, that I remember uh, peri renal from para renal is peri renal has an I for inside the renal fascia. Now, if we look here, I, I really like this view because we can see, you know, there's the parenchyma of the kidney, but we can also see how the perirenal space and its contents, namely the perirenal fat, can come within the renal sinus. So here is the hilum of the kidney. And as we move beyond that plane, we enter into a space that's surrounded by kidney parenchyma, which is the renal sinus. Now, because these perirenal and pararenal spaces are imbued with a significant amount of adipose connective tissue, sometimes with the rapid loss of fat tissue, um, kidneys can become more mobile. And so uh, that puts a person at a greater risk of a condition known as nephroptosis. With nephroptosis, so nephro meaning kidney and ptosis meaning uh, a sagging, um, the, the kidneys become displaced inferiorly. And uh, what happens there is gravity can pull the kidneys down. And this can be problematic because um, when the kidneys displace inferiorly, that uh, conductive system for urine, like the renal pelvis and proximal ureter can kink and cause um, a, a blockage for urine to, to pass smoothly along the ureter. Sometimes uh, nephroptosis can cannot resolve itself, but um, it can acutely resolve itself when a person uh, takes on a more recumbent position. So when they lie down, the effect of gravity upon the kidney in that inferior direction is lessened and they, uh, they can ascend back into their, their more typical location. So that perirenal fascia, that's the, the fascia that is separating the perirenal space from the inside from the pararenal spaces on the outside of that fascia is oftentimes referred to clinically as Garota's fascia. It's probably best conceptualized as an inverted cone it's quite variable in its full extent, but um, it tends to taper down towards the uh, down towards the transition of the abdominal cavity into the pelvis, and so that's approximately in in the area where the the common iliac vessels are. But it can go down to where those common iliac vessels uh, bifurcate into external and internal iliac arteries. Um, contained within this cone are the suprarenal glands, the kidney, and the ureters. At least the, the first in, in part of the ureter, um, referred to as the abdominal part of the ureter. Um, sometimes the proximal part of the, the pelvic ureter can be within this fascia oftentimes, however, it is not. So when we look inside that fascia, we can see all of the contents here. So we can see that suprarenal gland, we can see the kidney, we can see the ureter, uh, we can see a healthy amount of perirenal fat within. Um, and so this, this space uh, sets up the, um, the ability to uh, remove all of the contents within without disrupting contents outside of this space. So um, a nephrectomy is the surgical removal of a kidney and a simple nephrectomy would be just the removal of the kidney and the ligation of the renal vessels. But a radical nephrectomy, uh, which may be called for for a, uh, a significant uh, malignant disease, would remove everything within that perirenal space. So, suprarenal glands, the kidney, the uh, the ureter, the adipose connective tissue, uh, any lymph nodes within there, 
everything. And that leads us to the assessment question of the video, which is which vertebral level is best associated with the hyla of the kidneys? T11, T12? No, those are usually associated with the superior poles. L2, L3? No, those are usually associated with the inferior poles. L1 is best typically associated with the hyla of the kidneys. Thank you very much for your time.